Hi, this is your Hurricane Tracker video update recorded August 26, 2011 at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Just a moment, we're going to get to all the latest information on uh, Category 2 Hurricane Irene here approaching uh, North Carolina. We do have a new invest area of interest here in the uh, Western Atlantic. Not really worried about development of that system at this time, and it looks like that should stay out in the open Atlantic and not threaten the East Coast. We have Tropical Depression 10, which formed uh, yesterday here in the Eastern Atlantic. It has not strengthened to a tropical storm, and it looks like it should stay a tropical depression based on the current forecast and stay out in the open waters. Well, let's get to Category 2 Hurricane Irene. You can see she's been moving north, due north most of the day, and in the last few frames this afternoon, it looks like there's a little more easterly component uh, to her move. So it looks like that should take her right on course with the National Hurricane Center's track and landfall sometime tomorrow morning near Moorhead City, North Carolina. The good news today is uh, Irene has been ingesting some dry air on the southern side of its circulation. You'll notice here how a lot of this, uh, the white has been pulled in around the center. That means uh, the system is drying out a little bit. It's not quite as moist. And that has led to a little bit of weakening, which is good news for the South Carolina coast and for the uh, mid-Atlantic and New England coastlines later in the next 48 hours. But uh, be mindful, this is still a very strong storm, very large wind field covering several hundred miles, and it will impact most of the southeast and uh, the uh, northeastern U.S. coastlines over the next two days. Now, the not-so-good news is uh, the Hurricane Irene is, of course, beginning to move towards North Carolina. These uh, rain bands here, the darker shades of yellow and orange, are producing about 1 to 2 inches of rain per hour. These are probably about 90 minutes or so away from uh, reaching the southwestern shores of the state. Uh, first, we'll start near Wilmington, and then they'll move up the coast through the evening. The core of the hurricane winds are going to be right around the center, and that should pass, like I said, over Moorhead City and then over the very extreme eastern part of North Carolina. But uh, it's going to, Irene is such a large system, it's going to take 18 to 22 hours for the rain on the northern side of the storm and the rain on the southern side of the storm to fully cross any one given location. And of course, with that rain will come at least tropical storm force winds for many residents. And it's going to be a long several hours tonight. So hunker down, stay safe, and we hope... Uh, as many of you are prepared as possible for the long night ahead. The National Hurricane Center just released its updated track, watches, and warnings. Uh, winds are at 100 miles an hour again. That's down from this morning. So it's still a Category 2 storm, still a strong hurricane, just not as strong as once forecast. The uh, cone of uncertainty is very narrow. That means the Hurricane Center is confident. It's going to track right up over the uh, major cities of the northeastern United States. And there are now hurricane warnings. I do say hurricane warnings in effect for New York City, Long Island, Long Island Sound, Coastal Connecticut, Rhode Island, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard. And then there's Tropical Storm Watch for a very extreme northeastern Massachusetts. And then a Tropical Storm Watch uh, for Coastal Maine. And again, uh, here in northeastern Massachusetts, Tropical Storm Warning. And uh, definitely pay, pay close attention to that. If the system moves a little more to the east than forecast. That could bring hurricane force winds into your region. Of course, we still have hurricane warnings all the way down the New Jersey coast, Delaware, and the southeastern Virginia and Maryland coastlines, and of course down into North Carolina. We have tropical storm warnings here for coastal South Carolina and Chesapeake Bay. The main point here is uh, many areas are going to be impacted by lots of wind. You can see the green areas shade here is tropical storm force winds, and they're going to extend in at least a uh, 200 miles from the coast and uh, the main impact of course is going to be the wind and the rain and I can guarantee about several hundred thousand folks will lose electricity and it could be out for days so I hope everybody is prepared as possible. I want to run through some of the possible sustained winds based on the latest forecast from the Hurricane Center. Uh, the New York City area you would be experiencing sustained winds of 65 to 75 miles an hour with possible higher gusts. Philadelphia, 55 to 65 miles an hour. D.C., tropical storm force, 45 to 55 miles an hour. More importantly, I think one of the more regions in the short term that I'm concerned about is the Norfolk, Virginia Beach area. 80 to 90 mile an hour winds 
and looks like the center could pass very nearer just to the east of the metropolitan area. Along with the wind is going to come a lot of rain. This storm is not moving as fast as we'd like it, as we'd like it to. The slower a tropical cyclone moves, the more rain it's going to dump. So we're looking anywhere from 5 to 10 inches, probably uh, on the higher end of that scale for many of you. Um, and even more than 10 inches in some uh, localized areas is very possible. So it's going to be a widespread flood event like we haven't seen in many, many, many years. Along with the wind, it's just going to be a miserable 48 hours for uh, folks along the coastal sections of our, of our country there. Now the first landfall tonight should be somewhere near Moorhead City, maybe a little bit to the west there, a little bit to the east. But uh, this red shaded box is the area that can expect the hurricane force winds. So Moorhead City, uh, be getting those early in the morning. Nags Head, Kill Devil Hills, Elizabeth City, Plymouth. And then uh, a little bit later tomorrow in the afternoon, uh, Norfolk and Virginia Beach, Newport News, that region will experience hurricane force winds for several hours. Now along with these strong winds, are going to, there's going to be the pile up of water. You can see uh, a forecast for the center here near Moorhead City. The winds coming from the southwest wrapping around the center. These arrows here show the, uh, the direction of the wind. That will be pushing in the large swells of water that have built up in front of the storm. So here in the eastern North Carolina, we're talking a 6 to 11 foot storm surge, 75 to 100 mile an hour winds over the extreme eastern portion of the state. And uh, these lighter blue areas are where uh, the storm surge will be about 8 to 11 feet. Now here on the southwest side of the storm from Jacksonville southwestward, uh, the wind will be coming offshore. So we're not worried about a huge pileup of water, but it will still be a few feet above normal down in this region, as indicated by the light blue areas. But here around New Bird, uh, New Bern, Moorhead City, obviously the Outer Banks, many of them will be could be totally covered in water and uh, not even viewable anymore. So this is a dangerous situation. Mandatory evacuations have been ordered here. Hopefully most people have heeded those warnings and have gotten out of that region. Now as we get into the day Saturday, as I mentioned, this, the center will be pushing up very near Norfolk and Virginia Beach with 80 to 90 mile an hour winds. Here the winds are going to be coming right off uh, the eastern side of the storm, swirling in towards the center. It's going to be pushing water into the bays. And um, many of these coastal uh, regions um, within several feet of the water may be flooded, especially the, the lowest lying areas. And I know there's been some mandatory evacuations issued here. So if you are in, a, in, a, in an area that might flood, you know, you're, you're three, four, five, six feet above sea level, or even, you know, 10 feet or less above sea level, you may want to think seriously about uh, trying to get out as quickly as possible. Because if the center does take this track, those hurricane force winds are going to pile up that water here in the Chesapeake Bay and also up here uh, near, uh, near Delaware and the southeastern New Jersey coast. So not going to be a pretty day here in the mid-Atlantic tomorrow. Get prepared if you, if you haven't already. New York City Metro, again, we're expecting 65 to 80 mile an hour winds. We're expecting the center to come just, just to the west of, of the city, right over it, or just to the east. At this point, it really doesn't matter. The winds will be piling up the water here in Long Island Sound and in and around Manhattan. And that's why Mayor Bloomberg has ordered an evacuation of the lowest lying areas here in Zone A. And um, so if you live in these low-lying areas, uh, you're definitely at a great risk of flooding. Please evacuate if you haven't already before the transit system shuts down tomorrow. Because um, after the transit sy system shuts down, it's going to be a lot harder, harder to get out of Manhattan. But we just can't stress enough, we do not want to see a major flooding event with a lot of lives affected. Please get out if you haven't already. Now along with the wind and the flooding, excuse me, along with the flooding here in the storm surge around in, in and around Manhattan and Long Island, one of the uh, bigger threats that hasn't been talked about too much today is going to be the threat of glass. Just think about how many skyscrapers are just filled all over Manhattan with glass and how many stories high they go. The general rule of thumb is, of course, the higher you go in the atmosphere, the stronger the winds are due to less friction with the ground. So for about every 10 to 15 stories, you can theoretically gain about a category in winds. So the higher up you go, a lot of these windows are going to be very vulnerable and susceptible to wind damage. And when they blow out these uh, glass panels, they're going to shatter and they're going to fall over the streets. 
if it comes right over New York City as a Category 1. This is a picture from Hurricane Ike when it went over Houston. Obviously, that was a stronger storm, and this is probably more uh, glass breakage uh, than we were going to see in Manhattan, but it's still a possibility. It's a very dangerous situation. You do not want to be down on these streets if that storm is coming over Manhattan because th maybe the winds at the surface will be 70 miles an hour, but up here 10 to 20 stories could be 90 to 100 mile an hour winds just shattering that glass and having it fall to the ground. So definitely if you live in Manhattan, you're now under hurricane warning. Please take all precautions. Evacuate if you haven't already. If you're in an area, that's at risk of storm surge flood. And uh, we'll be back uh, tomorrow. We'll try to do another in-depth video update. And, of course, we'll be here three times a day with in-depth audio updates in the morning, early afternoon, and also late afternoon. And we'll be tweeting on our live feed within the app minute by minute, hour by hour of what's happening with the storm as she pushes inland. We'll be posting radar images of where the center is and who will be impacted by the center. And so if you want the latest up-to-the-minute information on Irene, go ahead and follow our feed. And we will be here through the next 48 uh, to 60 hours until the storm has passed. Thanks for listening. Sorry this was so long. We just had a lot to get through. And thanks for being a Hurricane Tr Tracker customer for using our app. Everybody stay safe there in North Carolina tonight and have a great day. Bye-bye.